Greetings, wonderful listeners and watchers. The gates of the Spree Park open once again, and I'm so very happy to introduce once again one some of my most valued and beloved players of Changeling the Lost. <laughs> Maybe you can introduce yourselves and I would love to share the spotlight with Kay. Uh, hi, I'm Kay and she, her pronouns. And tonight or today, it's a daytime. Wow, it's weird. Yeah, it's daytime, uh, right? It's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I was like, it's daytime here. Uh, I will be playing Princeton Channing, our fairest night singer himbo, Prince Charming. I totally forgot his name was Princeton Channing. It's his name so is good. Princeton Channing. So good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he just wants to to help out his friends and everyone else. And maybe he doesn't entirely, you know, he, he's he's in very new changeling to being uh, free and at the Spree Park. So he doesn't entirely understand, you know, the rules and what you should or shouldn't do. Uh, he leaves that interpretation up to his friends who will hopefully guide him. Such as? Oh, hi, I'm Wes Franks. <laughs> Uh, also known as Brother West from Carrying Comfort Studios, uh, and very excited to be here. Uh, today, I will be playing Rudyard Livingston, a uh, transplant from the United Kingdom that is uh, dwells here now in the Spree Park as a uh, as a Darkling Hell Diver. Um, he keeps to himself most of the time, but sometimes when there are those in need that of the of the other of his motley that are in need, um, he uh, sets aside all that other stuff and likes to help out a bit. I just realized how much trouble we're going to get in because Jenny couldn't be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Side note: <laughs> realized I forgot to mention this, and it's very very important. Uh, Princeton Channing comes with a beautiful white horse named Maximus. Yes. How can we ever forget <laughs> that, that you have your white horse, Maximus? Yes. Oh, man. This is, this is, it's already so good. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. I'm Dixie Cochran. Uh, you've probably seen me on here before since I work for Onyx Pets. Um, I am the in-house developer for Chronicles of Darkness and Exalted, and I work on a lot of other stuff because that's what I do. Um, I am playing Zilke Weiss, who is a, a Darkling Spiegel build. Hi, Ben. Yes, the Dixie Cochran. Um, <laughs> uh, which is one of our newer uh, kinds of fae. It will be in Kith and Kin, I do believe. Uh, and yeah, I'm super excited. She likes to know everybody's business and everybody's secrets. And yeah, Jenny really held the party together last time. So I feel like something bad's going to happen. Without uh, Dita. <laughs> without we Dita. We are lost Dita. without Dita. Our... <laughs> Also, you're missing like two and a half ton of pure muscle meat between you and every kind of danger. One and a half pure tons of muscle meat. Yep. Yep. No, completely valid. Very valid. But hey, um, we'll have them next time. We'll see. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully. And who are you, well, Tom? And who are you, Tom? Yeah. I I am a bodiless voice, just the narrator of our. Uh, changing the lost game and um, I am actually living in Germany where our game is set I'm not living in Berlin but close enough and you might notice this dur during the game that I might be grasping for words or mispronounce stuff or make awkward long pauses but... yeah, I only speak one <laughs> language so you're doing great <laughs> Yeah, I think we will be fine. Um, regarding fine, I would like to remind you that Changeling the Lost um, might hit on some difficult topics like emotional and physical abuse. And um, maybe uh, some domestic violence. And there are many crappy people out there in the world of darkness and the chronicles of darkness there are monsters in human form and there are monsters in fairy form so look out for them if you don't feel comfortable with what's happening here don't be afraid to just 
take your time, step aside, and do something else. It's all right. Um, I've implemented a traffic light system for my players on the gaming surface that we are using. We're using Foundry, and there's a traffic light system. So the players can move their little icons from the yellow circle, uh, the green circle, in which they are placed all right now because they are all well out fine. And if things are getting distressful for, for my players, they can choose to give me a sign with moving their icons to a different circle, uh, signaling to me that we should change the way our story goes right now. Good. Do we have anything else to add? We also will be having a giveaway happen thanks to the lovely Rachel Quinlan uh, at Rachel Quinlan on Twitter. And you can see up there in the top corner, this direction, uh, the, that is also uh, the website in which you can find their work. Um, go ahead and check them out. And uh, probably at the halfway point during our intermission or our break, uh, you're just going to have to, we'll have a keyword. You just sign off with that keyword in the chat, and then I'm going to take your names. I'm going to put them on this amazing wheel of names, and it, we'll have it show, and it'll be very fun. We'll spin the wheel, and then you'll get chosen. I wish you had an actual wheel. No, I'm sad there's not going to be an actual, like... Yeah, it's not going to be an actual wheel. It's just going to be a digital wheel, but they will be able to see it on the uh, on, on the Twitch stream, which is great. Well, that's fun. Yeah. You're free to imagine it as a Ferris wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah one. that one. So yes. Let's let's start our story. Let me whisk you away to the far away and forgotten place called the Spree Park, mm -hmm. which is settled in the middle of Berlin, close to the name giving river the Spree. It was a place for enjoyment and fun uh, and a stationary fair, a fair ground. And for one and another reason, um, it got lost to time and money because money is always the reason. And now it is deserted. But is it? No, it's not. There's a small community of people living there. People who crawled their way out of imprisonment and torture from the other side through, um, through the hatch. They escaped the fairy keepers who changed their bodies and they returned to a safe place, a place they made their own, which is just as forgotten as they are. Last time, as we visited the park, it was autumn. Some of the last autumn days, and so the Autumn Queen was in charge commanding everybody in the park and it is a time of closure you're not allowed to want to wander to wander too far off you have to keep your secrets you have to be careful to not give anything away but that time the season is gone it was followed by the silence of winter and now Spring has come. Spring knocked at the gates and brought flowers and green leaves. And the gates opened again. And it is a time that the changelings use to venture out, to leave the park for a day and a night, try to reconnect and to Remember what it's like to be with 
other people. And tonight, it is an early evening, although the sun already settled. It is much later than in the last month. And some dim rest of light filters through some dirty windows into a rundown bar. There are just two people inside. The manager of the place, currently trying to get through his books and order the necessary drinks for another night of revelry and fun. And somebody else, probably close to him, sitting on a high chair at the counter. And this is the wonderful and splendid frame of Princeton Charming. What do you Dang. look like? Yeah, Princeton Channing. Uh, he is sitting there and he's tall. He's got a blonde, perfectly coiffed hair, you know, perfectly set, noble-esque nose, uh, slightly tanner. Uh, he's got eyes like sapphires and emeralds. They, they glint and they shift. He's, he's the epitome of what a Prince Charming should look like in your storybooks. And he holds himself up in perfect pose. Uh, definitely not slouching or anything like that. Although he is tending to try and lean and sort of peek at the books. Uh, he is dressed in an outfit that looks it, it looks a bit like it's almost a costume because it's got some of that puff and tuft to it. Um, buttons up uh, blue sort of leathers and yeah, it looks like he's almost walked out of, I don't know, a set like into the woods or something like that where he was playing <laughs> a, a prince double. High dark leather boots. And he's even got, you know, a sword on his waist. He doesn't care about blending in, apparently, <laughs> to a yes. modern day church yes. society. Yeah, he's he's not the best, and sometimes he forgets that he needs to change, and he'll he'll laugh it off. Um, but right now, it's also just him, and his very uh, his the manager of the bar. What's the name of the manager? Uh, it's Lars. Lars is looking up from the pile of numbers he's trying to get through um, he shoots you a grumpy smile you know it's pretty hard to uh, to do this if you're sitting there in your renaissance fair costume you know <laughs> yeah like smile as he reaches grumpily and I'm like you know we could have more fun if we just sang you could put the book away and I could sing for you <sighs> you, you can you can see <laughs> this sigh has a story <laughs> he, uh, he is actually considering it mm -hmm. and then he's like ah oh, you know I, I've got the place full of people tonight. I, I need to get this done and I'm already late. But darn, you know, I would love you to sing for me. <sighs> well, what if we do both? Maybe I can sing you an encouraging tune. Something that'll get you to work a little swifter. Feel a little better, maybe. Would that be helpful? It, it'll help you focus, maybe. Mm. I could do that. I would be happy to do that for you. And uh, he'll reach a hand and like squeeze the hand that's like sort of clutching this book white knuckled and sort of try and massage out some of the, the tension that's there on this hold. The uh, hand is feeling pretty warm and you can feel that Lars answers, answers your, your grasp. Have you touched each other recently? Oh, of course. I'm probably very much the reason why he is late with these books. There's 
there's a little bit of, of sweat in his palm. And there's a badly disguised desire in his response, but then he looks up to you and says, um, like 90% 90, 90 of what you're doing is very distracting to me. <laughs> you think you can get into these 10% like being I, I could work on that, yes, and, and he'll like sort of pout a little, but seeing how important this is, he will pull his hand away. And like, there's just like this, yeah, there's, there's like a pout sort of gracing his very full lips. And he sort of like crosses his arms a little, but he does sort of turn away, look away, and he starts, he's, he starts to sort of sing under his breath, uh, a workman's tune. Something that, you know, when, when Lord Eskel uh, took him out to sort of show off or when he was checking on things and he was just essentially like a dog in a purse uh you know in the mines and things like that where gems were being you know perhaps heaved for lord eskel's you know vault um little bits he picked up from the language there amongst those hard workers and he wants to see if, if he can give some some inspiration to lars to help ease the tension as well as though to get him to push through his work and make it easier on him Let's play this game with dice. Yeah. Please throw me some presence plus expression. We want presence. Yes, thank you. And expression. Ooh, four successes. You, you notice him picking up the rhythm of the song, tapping with his left hand on the counter whilst writing down the orders on a tiny sheet of paper and he's getting quicker and quicker and you can, you can see that the pen starts dancing over the lines and like 10 minutes later it's done yeah um, I think... sorry no i was gonna say there's a big smile on on princeton's face lars puts down the pen turns to you reaches up with his hand and touches your neck you know Sometimes I've got this feeling that you're from a different place. It's called America. Uh, and Princeton just smiles. <laughs> it's called America, yeah. But I haven't been there in a while. And uh, he reaches a hand up and cups the, uh, the neck. The, the hand holding his neck. Uh, and just smiles a little redder. See, I turned myself down to 10%, right? Yeah, you did. Yeah. You did. Is there anything else you feel as he comments on you being from a different place? I think there's a, a small a small twist in his gut because he knows Oh yeah, I messed up again today. I wore I wore the regular outfit I should have changed into something. Um and he knows He's trying to excuse it away as like, I'm being helpful, but he knows he cheated for his own gain, um, which always probably doesn't settle well with him. But he's just, he's just trying to laugh it off. He wants to, to enjoy this moment because this is one of those moments where he feels very much cared for and indulged in a way that he hasn't since he, you know, left that place where he's been. So, are you successful with lying to yourself? Hmm. I think so. 
I think, unfortunately, this is a very practiced game for Princeton of lying to himself. Great. And both of you enjoy the moment. There's some genuine affection for you. And you can you can feel the other hand, the fingers reaching for your left ear. And then, then they grow cold. And then there's a soft thought, heavy and deep, as Lars collapses on the Lars? ground. Lars. Uh, and yeah, Princeton is right at his side, uh, pulling him up half, you know, into his lap. So he's cradling his head there, uh, checking for a pulse. He's like, Lars, but are you, are you all right, Lars? And he's like gently tapping his face, uh, looks, you know, panicked as all can be. I think you need to assess the situation with the skill medicine, but how do you approach the situation? Um, I think it's with his wits. He's got his wits about him. He's looking around. He's making sure to check with, you know, proper procedure and, and what little he's gathered over time about medicine, since it's certainly not his foray. Mm -hmm. right. uh, no successes. That's not good. We, we really should change the scene, right? We, we really should look into the, another place. And we're... The camera just swipes over Berlin and we see the slowly um, growing and um, more green, getting more green looking treetops and the big red Ferris wheel in the middle of them. We are in the Spree Park. And there's a small commotion going on right now. Um, there are two women talking to each other. And they are, they are actually close to the Ferris wheel right now. And one of them brought a cart. In the cart, one could see a uh, a pile of detritus, road mud, and there are some leather scraps from jackets and shoelaces, and it's just a pile of rubbish. The person who brought the cart isn't a, isn't a giant. She is a little bit under average height. She has hazelnut brown hair and she is clad in a scale armor, perfectly fitting her body. Usually the reality doesn't like seeing fey creatures wandering around. So they, they hide, uh, the reality hides everything away behind the so-called mask. That's what's protecting the changelings from being seen for what they truly are. And this is in some kind something that's happening to this armor as well. So it appears as a Kevlar vest. She looks combat ready, actually like she was in combat recently on her um, side she has a beating stick black but long and if you look through the mask you can see it is the um it is a sword a rapier made with the finest craftsmanship it looks like it doesn't come from this place as well as the armor in front of her is the other woman 
she moves, which helps to identify her as not being made out of marble. Her whole body looks like it's made from a wonderful stone. She is as radiant as her counterpart. And if you get closer to her, you can see that tiny cracks run down her cheek, across an eye, over the arms. Both of them are engulfed in strange lights. The warrior, she, um, she is radiating in a sweet, warm, um, words, shine of dawn, like the rising summer sun. The other, it is like, like this vibrant emerald green that you get as, as the sun shines through very young leaves. They are the summer and the spring queens of the Spreepark, Jude and Knucks. And they're having an argument. I'm very, very sorry, but you said she is creeping you out. You said she comes close to the park and you said we have to do something about it. I did something about it, says the warrior. Knux answers, well, I would have preferred to, you know, maybe not leave a hole for some people's lives. I guess I'm thankful that you are giving me the opportunity to return, but I never said I wanted to. She was looking into our park. And if she's just in some way, the way you are, she would try to help us, and I don't want people like these to help us. So, it's not like a life was lost, right? We killed an imposter. You killed an imposter. But it is an imposter, right? I think you did a lot today. Maybe. I will have to think about it. This is nothing we do in spring. And both of them frown. Then the summer queen takes the cart and goes away, probably to her dwelling as Knax is standing in the middle of an open area, staring at the Ferris wheel, contemplating stuff. And I guess we have some lurkers in the darkness out there who might have witnessed this exchange. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Are you hanging out with each other? I would say that I'm hanging out with Rudy. I don't think that Rudy wants to be hanging out with me. Rudy was probably, Rudy probably stumbled upon this. Like Rudy was coming back, has grabbed himself a drink and everything like that. And then just like stumbled upon this conversation and just kind of like stopped. 
And then, and then like, all of a sudden, I just, like, crept up next to you. Mm-hmm. It was, like, interesting, huh? Oh, shite. <laughs> Continue to do that. All right. Yeah, no, quite interesting. All right? Quite interesting indeed. I'm sorry. It's just my nature. It's fine. I, uh... Who do you think they killed? Obviously somebody that's been snooping around here. Probably they like said it a... wasn't a real person. Ah, uh, could it you be? You think it was a fetch? Do you think they killed a fetch? They killed a fetch? Oh no. I don't know, maybe. If so, who's? Oh, that's no good. That's no good. That's gonna be problems. It's gonna be questions, and questions bring people, and then people start coming around, and they're gonna start looking around here in the park, and then they're gonna start looking around for old Rudy as well. Well, yes, I think that's why the other queen was mad. Mayhaps we should get closer to investigate or introduce ourselves? I don't really want to talk to them. I just want to find out what they did. Let's creep closer, but be quiet about it. Yes. You're going to continue eavesdropping. Mm-hmm. Indeed. So, Jude is leaving the scene right now. Oh. And Knox is standing there, staring at the Ferris wheel, looking worried. Hmm. Well, Do you want to follow Jude? I think that Jude seems pretty happy with what she did. We should probably talk to Knux. Try to get the uh, information out of her. Don't you think? I, yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah. Why not? It is her season, after all. Aye, it is. It is indeed. What could it hurt? So yeah, so Zilger will, you know, step step out of the shadows and uh, say, Your Majesty, I couldn't help but over here. <laughs> oh, uh, Zilger, uh, please don't call me Your Majesty. You're the Spring Queen. It is your season. Y yeah, but... I, I think that's more like her. And she makes a wake knot towards the back of Jude. <laughs> <laughs> Knox is pretty down to earth. Did, did I hear right? Did you destroy someone's fetch? Um, or was it some other kind of construct? Well, what do you think about tea? About tea? Yes, tea. Drinking tea, you know. It's, it's Something fine. Something that, that we do usually as we talk about interesting stuff. <laughs> of, of course. Great. Well, Great tea. I'm always happy to have tea. Rudy, you like tea, right? You're from, you're from where the tea comes from. Oh, hi there. Yes, I'm here too. Uh, <laughs> didn't mean to... Uh... Oh, look. This can is here. Yeah, I'd love tea. Absolutely love it. Big fan. Came from the, the home of it. Yeah, that's wonderful. Just have a big tea party. Why why don't we? Yeah. Uh... Tea party. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, no, no. You know, we can... It, it can be us. We can invite someone else if you want to. If you need the company, you, you look like you could use some company there. Um. Uh, probably. My liege. Ah! Stop calling me this. You know, I you probably don't know, but there was a time where, the, where when I wasn't queen and Simon and I just did stuff here. I, I'd love it if it still was like this. So yet, yeah, please, please join me. And she walks over to one of the um, barbecue booths. Uh, where um, in a long forgotten time as there were still visitors and the uh, amusement park was still running. There was this place where you could get all the, the best quality food. 
and next to the barbecue booth there is the candy store and that's the place that she made her home um it is it is a great place it's um half of it, it is still the shelves full of sweets or stockings or um other shit she had to put somewhere like uh saucers and spoons and then there is a an old popcorn machine in the middle end of the room which is now um reused as a fireplace and there are some art supplies uh everywhere and she um placed cushions all over the floor so it's a very very comfy place and it's somehow still smelling of popcorn oh this is a nice spot you have in here i have to say yeah i try to keep it uh that way um so awkward tea where are you awkward tea there we go and she gets some herbs from one of the boxes and brucey some tea Oh, do, do you want me to do that for you there, love? I, I, I'm perfectly capable of doing it. If you want to sit down, relax a little bit. Look to be a bit of an intense conversation if you want to put your feet up. Yeah, this. Actually, this would be a nice change of pace for me. And she sits down onto one of the cushions very royally. Perfect. I'll make my way to start making some tea. Great. There's a very big kettle. Even better. Luca also sits down on one of the cushions near her, um, but whereas uh, the uh, queen was very probably graceful and, and awesome, Zilka always just, just kind of, she kind of like, collapses into her like little, you know, li like long, long skinny limbs just kind of all over the place. She's got like a knee up, you know. It doesn't look comfortable, but she can sit that way for hours. Great. Yeah, Knex is kind of the graceful person until the very last millisecond of every movement when there's just a, a tiny bit off. It's like the the stone within her body has rearranged or stuff like this. And there's always, always a tiny detail that's not just right. So you heard something I heard. You were quite loud and in the middle of the spray park yeah wasn't the best place for it right um i wouldn't have found out unless nona told me but you know nona is just always getting you know into things but then i just kind of walked by and overheard it so but i didn't want to interrupt because it seemed intense um Things happened. Um, she looks at Zilke. I know that you can keep a secret because um, you know the um, worth of secrets. How about you, Rudy? I. Uh bring tea over for Silka and, uh, and, uh, Canucks. Canucks and myself. And I sit down and I go, oh, I keep secrets all the time. Tons of secrets. Like the one time that Dita broke one of the levers over at the bumper cars and I didn't tell a single soul. Oh. Well, except for, that. well, that's the one secret that I've given away, but there's tons over, just, this thing's full of it. Okay, um, so you know we are really trying to to keep this place safe, mm -hmm. and um, I guess somebody found out and tried to find their match. We uh, found an imposter who was to be um, somehow be disposed of. Um, 
well, Jude cho chose a very Jude solution, as it seems. Mm-hmm. Big sword, poke poke. That's kind of her thing. Yeah. Quite messy. Well, not if it's a fetch. They're made of sticks and things, usually. Buttons, glass. Not as messy as killing a person. I guess short term, yes, you're right, but long term, messy. It depends on what they were trying to do. Were they trying to eliminate their match? Were they trying to get in contact? Do we know anything you about them? Would have loved to know exactly this, but... Stone Body killed them before, so... Yeah, kind of in the dark. About that. But... I might know from which area this person comes. And maybe we could see if there are any any loose ends in regards of people who might miss them. And um, make sure that there's silence about this matter. Of course, yeah. If there only were some, like, really scary people who would have the ability to, you know, maybe... I I don't know if I'm the right person for this kind of thing. You know, I just... Over at the bumper cars, we just got uh, the, the new handle put in and everything, and, and I've been wiring the new sound system, and just, it's been really taxing and everything, you know? Maybe, maybe, you know, Princeton and Silica could take care of it. Rudy, you're coming with us. You're our friend. You have skills. I guess. I, uh, fine. As long as it doesn't get out of hand like last time. Uh, could be fun. All right, well, I at least want... I want Princeton there. I'm gonna make sure he's not wandering off gallivanting. I think gallivanting is his only mode of transportation. <laughs> Have you seen him? I in that ridiculous costume he's been wearing for the past few days. It fits his horse. The horse is another thing that we need to talk about. <laughs> I know we're in Berlin, but but Jesus, please us. I would say the perfect city for a horse and and you can see that she is starting to actually relax and um, getting to her more more uh, usual behavior like okay. and, and you know what maybe maybe we could we could make up some scheme and, and build it around the horse. That would be very fun, wouldn't it? Yes, horse-based schemes <laughs> are often exciting. Nothing could go wrong with that whatsoever. No, this time, not a little bit. Canax is notorious for her plans going massively away. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> of course, but we should settle this matter first before we do a horse heist. Don't you think? Horse heist. I love the, the sound of this. Yeah, this is great. Okay, uh, let's see. You take care of this little fetch problem. Just make sure that nobody is missing this person and just maybe don't know tell them they moved or stuff and um i will prepare a horse heist sounds good perfectly balanced um i uh i should probably bestow you with some sort of boon shouldn't i being all royally and stuff um might be helpful what? purple something purple you're right you need something purple 
I I said it might be helpful. <laughs> yes, my lady. Yes. But purple's, purple's very fine helpful. too. Purple can be just as good. <laughs> um, and she picks up a tube of uh, paint from from the floor. It's purple, and she gives it to probably Silka. Hold on to this. It's a scary world out there. And you can trust in this thing to bring some color to whatever you encounter. Okay, my lady, thank you. And as her finger fingers leave uh, the paint container, you, you notice that that it starts to prickle with electricity in your head. And you're granted a trifle, a minor token. Okay, you have to be some places. I need to find the perfect tea recipe for horse hastes. And um, okay. we will... We'll just be going then. Yeah. Yeah, we. It will be great. It, I, I have full faith in you, m'lady. I always forget how intense she is. As, as like we like walk yeah, outside, walk out, I kind of look at Rudy. She gave you a paint. Yes, but it 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 did something else. We'll we'll figure it out. Um, we should probably look into what happened, uh, and we should also probably find Princeton. So, um. I think there's a, a sort of noise on your phone. Because... Great, we have phones. I was gonna like, look through phones. a mirror and try to yeah. find, like bring them. Okay. Wait, what a day! We have phones. I could just uh. call people. And uh, you received a uh, a short message from Stoneface Cloudhead with an address, because Knacks told you that uh, she knows where this person comes from. We will also call Princeton. See where the hell he's gotten off to. Princeton. Yeah. Um, I think both of you are covered in cold sweat right now. Mm -hmm. um, there's no sign of life. At least a sign of breathing a little bit. Yeah, I, I think this is time spliced where it's just just at the crux of where um, Princeton had like failed to try and figure out what was going on. And he literally went to pull out his phone and he's be, like, it's going to be OK. It's going to be right. It's, you're, you're fine, Lars. You're, you're fine. And he like goes to a, like hit um, Silka's number, but it like pops up on the screen that she's calling. And he's like, it's like she always knows. And he, <laughs> he hits the answer. He's like, Silka, I think goodness uh, holy hedge um i i i need i need you to come you know you know the bar that you sometimes find me in when i'm not supposed to be out of the spree park i i need you to come there right now so you're out of the spree park again yes well the, the gates horse? are open. yeah yes the gates are open though but I, I need you to come something something's wrong something's very wrong okay, um okay. and now 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 okay okay we're on our way god yeah and he's normally never this dem like this is yeah. very yeah this is very out of character Rudy, we have to go. Yeah, a little bit. And like, not in jubilant song. We will go to that bar. What are your means of transport? Do we have motorcycles? Are we cool? I'm gonna say that we both have motorcycles because I want to be in a changeling biker gang. <laughs> so like we're all together, it's like two of us on motorcycles and a horse. <laughs> Dita can sit in your sidecar. She can just like compress herself down. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's like a train cart. Yeah. Just to fit the fucking ogre inside. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, as time goes by and Princeton is waiting, there's a little change in Lars' behavior. Um, at first, his eyes start to roll with the lids closed, but you can you can see the the eyeballs moving. And then you um, you notice that he starts to to wave his arms and legs around. And then his hair starts rising up and you get the impression that he is actually falling right now. You're, you're, you're falling. That's strange. Uh, that's, that, that's different. That's strange. Um, and I think Princeton's got like an arm around. He's got, cause he's got him like on his, ch on his lap and he's got an arm now around his chest to sort of keep his arms from flailing too much. And he's, he's petting back the hair and he's like, it's going to be okay. I, I don't know medicine. Um, I, I'm just pretty, but it's okay. Cause I have friends and they're very smart and, and they're going to come and they're going to know what's happening. And, and you're, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You're going to be very, very fine. Lars, the stories don't end like this. This story doesn't have to end like this. You're, you're going to be fine. It's all right. It's all right. It's just, Breathe, keep breathing, just keep breathing. Oh God, where could you be falling from? The lips open as if they were to scream. A motorcycle or two motorcycles are halting in front of a door leading to a underground bar. The, clo uh, the door is closed. What do you do? I mean, we're going to come inside, I'm assuming. Yeah, is the horse outside? The horse is outside. <laughs> the horse is outside. There's two motorcycles parked next to a horse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a... a um, not a carpet. A sheet thrown over the horse. Um, <laughs> well, <that's it. laughs> the door is locked. Oh. Oh, right, right, good, good. Um, and I think it, with one arm, he like scoops Lars up so he's holding him in one arm and just like stands and rushes over the door and unlocks it and like pushes it open and he looks at you and just like he goes help now did you kill a man no god no i this is this is my my lars and something something is wrong we were about to uh, he just he, he collapsed and he he seems like he's falling i don't know medicine very well um He, he backs up into the bar, like, still, like, holding, cradling very close. Zilka will relock the door behind us. Yeah. It's... Cause it's not right. What's, what, he, he's having a seizure or something. No, no, he's, he's flailing, but he's not so his eyes, it, he's not, he's not like that. It's it, not, not that something is wrong. He is half upright, right? Yeah. Yeah, so his hair doesn't behave according to gravity. It's just like as if he was falling backwards and the hair is just blowing around his head oh, into weird. your direction. I was just about to call you when Kismet, you called me. We have dead fetches. Well, we have one dead fetch. You don't, don't, don't care. Help him. <laughs> he 
Do you think he did something to bring this on? Did you do something to bring this on? No, no, I mean, well, I sang to him a bit to help him with his work faster so that we could, you know, stuff. Yeah, sounds beautiful. Wonderful. Um, this man is not awake, obviously. But he is dreaming. And from what you would guess is that he is um, probably dreaming to fall from um, from some sort of height. And you know that at the end of the fall, one usually wakes up because you hit something. The body is in a strange place right now, halfway in dream, halfway not. So it's reasonable to assume that somewhere in the larger surrounding area, something else is causing this effect and that there might be major fallout for this guy if he lands before he awakes you're sure you can do something to wake him up right now you just have to get through to him all right okay so something's happening around here in the area uh something's causing him to he's dreaming but he's not dreaming. He's he's half in and half out. So we have to wake him up somehow. He's going to hit the ground. Is he going to explode? He might explode. It might get all over the bar if we don't wake him up before he hits the ground. Yeah, no, that's not fun. No, no explode. There will there will be no exploding. I I look, lad. I I I don't want him to explode. But uh, I, we've got to figure out some way to wake him up right now. All right. All right, all right. Um, okay. Waking up. Uh, I, I, I could... Dilka slaps him. <laughs> Just slaps him right across the face. Let's try brawl. You actually need to roll brawl for that? All right, all right. Yeah. All right, yeah. hang on. Dilka. I, it's, I, I'm not actually very strong, so. Wow. I actually got a success and I had a chance to die. Wow. So yeah, I just slap him just across the face. Like, just open palm, not like, you know, trying to hurt him, trying to wake him up. Um, there's a reaction to this. Definitely. You can... You can see that there is some sort of um, there's some sort of uh, gulping, and you can you can see that the the arm on the side which you hit is is uh, making a short shock movement up to 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 feel if if something hurt his face and. Um, you're not totally through, but you have the, you you got a response. This is good. This is. Oh, okay. You can trigger him. Okay. Uh, maybe, just maybe. We can scare him awake. That that, that could work. Maybe we could we could scare him awake, or he's or, already having a nightmare. Well, well, yeah, I don't want. want what if what if we change the nightmare? What if what if I did like a reverse lullaby? 
isn't that just like metal? I don't know what metal is, but <laughs> but but I, I could I could sing him of all the wonderful things of being awake of all the plans we have of what we're going to do one day. I think we should just hit him again. No. Uh, Rudyard Rudy brings out uh, the um, the replacement for his Walkman, which is an iPod Nano that was given by Princeton as yeah, a Princeton's... form of an apology, and goes, "Is there a is there a sound system in here?" Yeah, it's right it's right there, and he like points to the sound system. Um, Rudyard runs over to the sound system, grabs the auxiliary cord, and plugs in the iPod Nano, and goes. I'm going to need you to sing along with this lullaby, but it's not going to be, it's its going to be quite the reverse of a lullaby, okay, Okay, all, all right, yeah, yeah, of course. And he plays Creator's Pleasure to Kill, which is uh, a German thrash metal band, <laughs> which is very, it's high intensity, it is a lot of yelling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Princeton will join in with this, though very confused. <laughs> Just, just, just yelling. Just, just, <laughs> it's like so the opposite of like most of the singing he does. He's very Disney, um, and like yeah. But he's happy to to give it his all, anything for Lars. Mm -hmm. Tilka will also, in preparation while they're doing all this, go fill up a pitcher with water, so I can Perfect. dunk him if I need to. I love this idea too much. <laughs> <laughs> It's working. It's just. It's it just looks like I rolled a ten on a chance die to slap it. Yes, as, <laughs> as well. It it was the perfect starter, and now, by the power of teamwork and trash metal, and the beautiful singing voice of growling Princeton Channing, we um. We get more reactions from this man. Um, you you can feel his weight pressing into your chest and your arm and for a short second you can you can feel the wind that's howling about uh, around the falling body um as as the dream closes in on its climax and then the metal hits and well, you're pretty close to these ears, and you have a magical voice. Um, it is cacophony incarnate, and it works. There's a shock reaction throughout the whole body, and and then you have to really cling to Lars so he wouldn't fall to the ground as he starts struggling against you and and uh, tries to to rid himself. Hey, hey, oh, he immediately, as soon as he's like awake, he stops singing whatever this warbled cacophonous ugh is. Um, and just like, shut, shut it off. Oh, Lars, oh, thank God. Yeah, and like, he's like sm trying to like hold him, but also like smooth back his hair and be like, hey, it's it's me, it's Princeton. You're, you're fine, you're fine. Just, you just, you fell, you had a bad dream. Do, do you remember anything? Do you know what was happening? Are you are you all right? And he like takes his chin, turns it to where Zilka hit it, and he's like, mm. and just <laughs> breathe, 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 breathe. Just breathe, shh, shh. I've got you, I've got you. Sorry, mate. We came in to have some Hefeweizen, and you were asleep, and we wanted to wake you up. Why don't you turn off the music, Rudy? Oh, sorry, sorry, yes, sorry. <laughs> turns out, sorry. <laughs> like, turns Thanks, out. bud. Yeah. And just, yeah, the prince is just clutching him close, and is just breathing deep, and there's like a couple of like tears probably that fall down his cheek. Um, and he's like, hey, you're, you're all right. I've got you. I've got you. I've always, I'm always going to have you. You're, you're fine. You're fine. It's fine. What, what, what were you, what were you dreaming about, love? His eyes are flinting through the air, resting for a short moment on Silke and Rudy, and I need you to roll this presence plus, um... Um, what's it called? It's not performance, it's... You did it before. Ah. Expression. Roll with two additional dice, because the power 
of um, black uh, trash metal and stuff like this, support by <laughs> I like how you called it trash metal. <laughs> so that's Rudy, Rudy and Sokka are rolling. No, you are rolling. Oh, I'm You're rolling. It's You're your rolling. roll, yeah. and you roll. get two additional dice. Okay. All right. So it's presence and expression, and I get to add two. Never figure out how to add two more dice to this thing. I'm just going to roll the roll and then roll 2d10 if that's okay. Uh, you can just put it into modifier. Oh, there want. we go. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, two successes. Welcome to rule bending world. I think, I think he... He sees Silica and Rudy and his eyes widen even more. Hey. And then he turns around to your face and just freezes in awe. And then he whispers, You are beautiful. Of course, of course I am. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm always, I'm always beautiful. <laughs> um, those are, those are my, my roommates. Remember I've told room, roommates, that's the word, right? Yes. Um, Hey, are you are you all right? You just sort of you just sort of passed out there, love. Um, he's like running like a finger across like his cheek, like softly trying trying to garner anything. Uh, yeah, flatmates of Princeton here. Though never heard of you before, though. Zilka is very confused at why everybody else is trying to do the whole lying thing, since that's kind of her entire bag. So she's just looking oh, at them like, yeah. "What are you doing?" <laughs> and Rudy's just like like looking at Zilka, being like. so strange what do what do i look like what do i look like lars your eyes there's somehow he's seeing through your mask that's impossible it's never how i um i reach out and i like touch my own face i'm like man Zilka's terrifying looking without her mask. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. she is. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, he's gonna just like put an arm to block that sort of. So song. like he can see my like camera lens eyes and my TV static skin and my hair made of videotape. Oh, and my smile that is way too wide and jagged. Oh goodness. Rudy's gonna yeah. find a corner to get into just to I forgot what you look like without your mask. Uh it looks like a mix between the Mothman and Gargoyle. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Hey, what are you what are you seeing right now? Uh, can you can you describe it for me, please, Lars? It's it's all right. I've got you. I'm, I would never let anything bad happen to you. You have my oath. Lars, there's a it's a large and they deeper. Oh, and yeah. Everything ever about you, it's just like... And he touches your cheek and... This... This isn't real, is it? It's... It's skin, but it's... It's just something you show others, right? Yeah, of course. Hey, you're okay. You're... I think it's time to fix this. Yeah, you're you're just you're dreaming right now, love. It's it's all right. You're just stop. Dreaming. Stop it, everybody. Stop. Let me do my work. Until it comes up, she just very creepily gets close, gets gets in his ear. Close your eyes just for a minute, love. Just, you just... are still having a nightmare, and as soon as we walk out that door, you will wake up. And everything will be fine. Um, and that is me using one of my goblin contracts, uh, Gleb Tongue. So I can add my weird to my subterfuge role to make him believe that absolutely. Wonderful. So I will be doing that. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, I'm rolling. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. Right. You got a modifier? You just type like 2d10? I think you just type 2. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. I like a one success on eight dice, Jesus. But I got it! You got it, and you're still better in it than Lars is. He so. closes his eyes. But it is probably the mesmerizing sound of Princeton's voice. Because as Zilke entered the frame, he was already starting to begin <clears throat> again. But then his eyes were closed. So you need you. to go before he gets back up. <clears throat> Please. We can talk outside. Yes, definitely. Um, Lars, just uh, do me a favor. Close the bar tonight. Don't open. Just go um relax uh and and if anything happens if you see anything strange or anything's different or you have any issues uh, just call me call me immediately i know sometimes i'm like you can't call me but but, but this is this I've, is a time i've got many people coming in tonight no no one's coming tonight rudy puts a hand on prince and goes mate we've got to go Just, if you see anything strange, just just call me. Promise. I promise. Something feels wrong. I know. I'm, I'm gonna figure it out, and we're gonna we're gonna make it right. I'll always make it right for you. I'm I'm yours. And I think he goes over to like a sort of couch that's in like a back area and just lays him down on it. Go away, go away. I can't just leave him on the floor. He can, he can, he's he's got two legs. He's got two arms. He's a grown man. Come on. Puts him, just drops a rose right there and just goes. <laughs> you leave him and you crossed the room. You're in the movement to leave the bar to close the door. As there's something you can hear, what you probably shouldn't because of the distance, but nonetheless, it rings in your ears. There's something wrong with me. Are you? And then you close the door, and I need you to roll for sanity, uh, for clarity. Clarity. All of us? Please. No. Just Princeton. Princeton. Okay. Uh, remind me, sorry, really quick, how you roll for clarity. You just roll a number of dice, I'm going to tell you. Okay. And you hope for not rolling any successes on this. Oh, joy. So please roll two dice. Mm -hmm. uh, so roll 2d10? Yes. The d10's all the way down, baby. Uh, one, eight, one, three. That's one success. You're brave. Well, this, this sentence, this message, it does steer up something within you. And is this is he questioning you? Is she is he losing trust in you? Can you can you really take this from the most important person right now? Never. No. Please roll two additional dice. The successes on these will be damage to your clarity. Uh, seven and a one. So I don't think I have any successes. That's right. So what's centering you as you feel that 
something that's that was giving you some stability for the last few months might break away from you. I think he's reluctant to leave, especially as he hears this. So if it's all right with um, my compatriots, I think there's like a hand on either one of his shoulders helping to sort of push him out. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's that weight of his, uh, his Motley's hands on him that they've got him. Mm-hmm. That is the only thing that sort of preserves him in this moment. It's like as... like dragging you out by your elbows. Like yep. <laughs> yeah, as he 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 wants to he keeps looking back and he's unsure about leaving and yeah, I think it's it's their hold that keeps him from just crumpling or running back in. Good. So you leave the bar. You will notice Rudy has sheathed a knife in the like on, on, on his back too, that's like on a on a on his belt. Just because things were starting to get a little bit somebody noticing things. So, Princeton, I can't help but notice that you're out here with your sword and your horse and your mortal boyfriend. Yeah, that's new. No, it doesn't it's not. seem like it's new actually. No, it's it's actually not. Um, but he's, he's, he's mine and I'm his and it helps. And you're endangering everybody in the spree park. He doesn't know. He just, he thinks I'm- He knows now. He knows now. I just, I, I needed something else. I needed to sing. I, and, and he likes it when I sing and he, he runs his bar and they run themed karaoke. And I just came every night and then we started talking and- and I won prizes and, and we talked and he's so sweet and he cares and he looks at me like I've like I've hung the moon. It's like why didn't you tell us we're your friends? Because you'd have told me not to come back. I'd have told you to be careful. I've, you know I've that been, we walk among mortals fairly often. I, I, I've been very careful. Um he they he thinks I, I work uh as a, a costume for, for kids' parties, you know, you dress up like a, a prince and you go and you sing, apparently. It's a thing. And it explains Maximus also. Um, You're very conspicuous. Yeah, if People I remember... remember you. I forgot to change today. If I remember clearly, wasn't it a few months ago where you were being chased into the park? For you? I was c- kind of leaving here. Well, it seems like you're not the only one that's putting the rest of us in danger there, Princeton, because uh, we've got a bit of a job. Oh, a job, a job about what? Wait, you, was that the fetches earlier? Yes. Mm-hmm. The fetch was dispatched by the Summer you. Queen killed one. Mm-hmm. Oh, do we know whose fetch it was? I can find out. We've got, right, a, um, we've got an address. All right. Uh, he's going to be all right, though, right? What you did will we'll fix him. It'll be fine. I don't know if he'll still be able to see through it next time you come in. All right. I have no idea what's going on with him. Okay. Um, well, it'll, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It has to be fine. Um, we'll, 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 it's fine. It's going to be fine. And stories, stories have happy endings and he'll be fine. Um, what are we dealing with? What, are, what, what do we know about this fetch? And, it, and it's quite clear he's trying to, like, dismiss this concern. Because then he can sort of just focus on this other task and everything will be fine. Well, we know it's dead. It was apparently snooping around the park, trying to peer into the gates, trying to look about, find mm-hmm. some things out. All right. Uh, so will pull out her mirror. Um, and I'm actually, I, I want to use one of my contracts twice, actually. Um, once to find out kind of what happened here with this guy, and once to find out what happened with the fetch. Because I can, like, look up a, a specific scene in a mirror, it'll play it back to me, and then you all can see it, too. Perfect. So, I want to use it once, like I said, to, um, figure out what happened with the fetch. Mm-hmm. Um, and with my Darkling ability on it, I can also detect supernatural phenomena in the reflected events. So maybe I can figure out what's going on with Lars. Nice. 
I like I can use all my abilities. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to roll once for that. Sorry, I'm like trying to look at the book and this at the same time. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, you maybe give us the name of the contract. It is called Reflections of the Past. Reflections of the Past. And it is intelligence plus occult plus weird. I've got too many sheets. I'm sorry, everybody who's watching. <laughs> so many sheets. One success. This is enough to to get a better feeling about what happened with Lars. Mm -hmm. So you, all three of you can, can see how um, both of them, Princeton and Lars, entered the bar from some back door. And um, they had a little bit of banter. Everything was all right. And then you can see something that Princeton didn't see. It was like like some sort of wave or a ripple in the air crawling over the entirety of the interior. And it uh, it spilled over Lars. And for a short second, you, all, of, you know, all three of you, saw um, saw uh, a cliff, a monstrous cliff, and in the air above that was Lars hanging in the air, struggling against invisible threats and then the threats were cut and I think I need to roll uh, uh, you to roll a intelligence plus occult roll Damn it. One success. You realize, yes, this is a dream. And it didn't come from the hedge. It came from this side. And, um, The thing is, it it changed its environment this very same way you would change something in the hedge or in dreams. It's the process of um, of weaving. Somebody is dream weaving on this side of the hedge in the Iron World. And there's only one way you know of how to do this. This is with a very special sort of token, a so-called bubble. Something plucked from the dreams of somebody by the fairy, something they, they loved as they crawled into the dreamscapes. And then they just took it away. And they brought us back, just like they did with you. But it is just scenery, just some some sort of uh, some way to um, to enhance the look of everything. 
they never notice that these things are actually very powerful. They allow to change reality in a specific way, depending on the dreams they were stolen from. Somebody is using this thing not far away from here. I'll explain that to everybody, obviously. Uh, yeah, so someone did this. I must slay them. They are clearly a monster. You don't... Look, Princeton. Hold on. He's like reaching for a sword like he pissed. Prince Princeton, it might it might just be somebody like us that just doesn't understand. Yeah, right? it could be an accident. You're in deep, mate. He like closes his eyes and sighs and like resheaths the sword and he's like, I, I will give it but a moment and a moment's chance to explain it. And if, if nary an explanation of any sort that is, that is, that is right, that is fine, that is, that is applicable, then I shall cleave them in twain. Before you go clefting anybody, we should check out the other thing and then try to figure out where this person is. Fine. Now we have two things that we're doing. And that's fine. I don't mind doing two things tonight. It's, I was just going to listen to music by myself. Um, so, but instead you listen to music with your friends in a bar. It was fun. Um, so I'm going to do the thing again to see what happened when the fetch got killed. Like, I want to see that exact scene because I want to see whose fetch it is. Three successes this time. Ooh. Wonderful. It is. It is already dark. We are seeing the forest surrounding the Shui Park. There's somebody hiding in the bushes, trying to sneak around. And then some light falls on their back. Some, some source of radiance is behind them. And then the point of a spear enters the picture. You can see the uh, cutting sharp edge of it reflecting some of the summer sun. It easily cuts through the cotton of the sweatshirt a uh, hiding person is wearing. And you can hear Jude's voice so who do we have here snooping around being all spy crafty don't turn stay I know you're kind don't believe for a second I will let you do anything. Who are you? I don't think you understand what's happening right now. You you, you see, I'm I am no danger. Oh yes, that's what they always say. I defended this place against goblins, huntsmen. You know, I killed a fucking huntsman once. And I defended against things like you. Let me, sh let me tell you. I can explain. Sure you can. And then what? My head filled with lies. I don't 
think so. And I can, like, give you just the slightest bit of trust, maybe. And the spear withdraws just one or two inches. Turn around. Show yourself. The person turns around. And you see, you see a face, long ruffled hair. The skin is made of flesh, not stone. There are no cracks. This person resembles Knacks in so many ways. And then a spear pierces her heart. No! Not her. Never. And Jude, kill, Jude kills the fetch. And I think this is an appropriate moment to take a break. Dope. Tight, 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 tight. Sick. Not a problem at all. Okay, so yeah, we're going to take a break. Um... <laughs> While uh, all of you are watching, all, 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 all 16 or various others of you are watching, while we're taking a break, uh, if you could please enter a key word that I'm going to say right now into the chat. Do it one time. One time. And you're going to say it's going to be the word fetch. F-E-T-C-H. So, once you enter the word fetch, it will put you into a drawing that we have here for this lovely art that's up in this corner over here. It's yeah, the there's stickers. A, there's and a cool pins. changeling like Luna Mop pin. There's all kinds mm -hmm. of stickers. It's very cool. All of those things. So if you just type in fetch while we're on a break, and then once we come back, we will look at my wheel of names. So we shall be back very soon. Thank you.
And we are back. <laughs> is it giveaway time? It's it giveaway, is giveaway time. time. Now, as you can see here. Oh, look at your little spinny thing. I have a spinny wheel, a wheel of names. I have made this myself <gasps> with my own blood, sweat, and tears. I'm just kidding. No, this is this is a <laughs> very wonderful website that you can use for giveaways that where they let you put in names and you hit a spinning wheel. Now we have five people that have entered the word fetch into the chat for this giveaway of stick stickers and pins, as you can tell see here. By Rachel Quinlan, right there. Look at those stickers and, the, and those, those three pins. They're wonderful. Now, if there's anybody else, you've got about 15 seconds to, to, to enter if you want to. Um, but uh, just wanted to uh, make sure that you go ahead and check out her uh, Twitter, give her a follow, as well as her website. Go ahead, shop around. A lot of wonderful art, a lot of stuff that's inspired by Changeling um, that you can see there. Um, it's wonderful. I'm probably going to grab some stuff myself as well. Um, and yeah, I might just buy that pen. Yeah. I just want that pen, but like yeah. I'm not going to enter it's obviously so my own giveaway. I, yeah. It's so <laughs> lovely. <laughs> um, like I might buy that pen for Rose Bailey. I might buy that pen for Megan Fitzgerald. Like mm -hmm. we just might all have that pen. Um, so. Uh, if uh, so, once we do have a winner, we go through and uh, the name do, uh, the the wheel does land on a winner's name. Uh, then how are we going to get in contact with the winner, uh, it, either Tom or Dixie? Oh, sorry. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that every is everybody is on Discord, right? I see. Uh, I think. I think. Uh, most everybody, except for I, I do not believe KS8T is on Discord uh, with us. Well, they can well, message me on Twitch. I'm mm -hmm. Dixie Cyanide, um, mm -hmm. or they can message me on Discord if they know me on Discord. I'm mm -hmm. Dixie Cyanide pretty much everywhere, so I'm really easy to find. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we'll get we'll get the details and everything like that, and have that relayed and sent to you. Fetch, make it happen. Oh, well, we have we have we have a we have a lit minute edition. Uh, uh, we do. Um, I had a, another yes, big dad. Now I'm wondering if like I have a friend who has a band called the Minaj School. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'm like, I, is that Margaret? That, that you, yeah, that you've that you've put put me on to that uh, has been it's a great name. Great, great fucking it's a name. Great name. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we have another. So I'm going to take these hands of mine and I'm going to spin the wheel. The wheel of names as soon as I <laughs> click here. That even makes a sound. Spin that wheel. Spin that oh. wheel. And the winner is your underscore big underscore dad. We have a Whoa. winner. It does confetti and stuff too. This is a lot. Oh my god, so I love it. I, I love it. Oh, I mean, I'm like seeing that on delay, but I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god. Go big goodness. dad. That was not rigged. No, not rigged. <laughs> not, not rigged. <laughs> uh, as you can tell, as you can tell, it's not rigged. But yeah, uh, just, just reach out to us with uh, you know where to find me with your details, big dad. and uh, we will get that sent to you too sweet, uh, as this... the French say. <laughs> there are only two two minor things I want to add to this. First, mm -hmm. I'm obviously totally don't, uh, won't gonna kill dad for this moth pin. Like, seriously <laughs> not. And <laughs> the second thing is, well, um, we got another one and we have got another gaming session scheduled for next week. Yes. So um, maybe you should return and uh, get another chance at it. Yes. Are you saying that there's another chance? Yes, I'm saying there's another chance. For another pin packet. For oh another fucking Oh! <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. There's uh. a chance for another person who isn't obviously me because we can't win. Get into our own giveaways. Our own giveaways. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, 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 yes. But I went ahead and dropped the link to, to Rachel's Twitter there. Uh, and as soon as I get my 30 second timeout for posting two links back to back, um, I will drop the link to uh, her website as well. Uh, so you can definitely check out that art. Uh, artist and illustrator, founder at Changeling Artist Collective, Rachel Quinlan. And, uh, you know, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to pass the reins back over to our dear friend, Tom. 
Thank you very much. <laughs> I think we just left with three changelings staring into a mirror and seeing um, the Summer Queen Jude protecting the spray park from a maybe hostile fetch who resembles very much the looks of the Spring Queen Knucks. At also, as the vision just clears and you start to see yourself back in the um, in the mirror, you notice that the temperature shifts. And um, this time, Princeton does feel this this very, very delicate shock wave. It's happening again, somewhere close by. Uh, he wrenches the door to the bar back open and looks over to the couch to see. No, 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 no. We no, have no, to no, go no, try no. to find where it's coming from. Nope, don't do that. We gotta find the source, nope, find the source Princeton. He's just gonna see us again, and then I have to do the thing again, and it's just gonna mess with his brain. Fine, fine. He, like, closes it again. Just like, fine, fine, fine. Let's, let's go figure out where this is. Now. So yeah, since we could see it before, we could feel it now. Let's try to, like, pinpoint the source. Mm -hmm. uh, you are at the sorry no go ahead I was just going to say if I was going to be able to use like maybe uh, investigation or something of that of that nature sounds reasonable to me okay. the thing is you are at the outer edges of our bigger apartment complexes so um, there are many multi-story storied buildings with apartments and more apartments and more apartments. Um, it isn't the richest area you're in right now. Um, it's kept alive a little bit by the bar, uh, but um, yeah, uh, the people aren't too, too well off who are living here. And you notice that the epicenter of the wave must be more in the in the center, in the middle of this place. You have to probably walk into the um, backyards and have a look from there. How do you feel about that, what you have seen just now? I think Princeton sort of like keeping it together as much as he can because two people he cares about very greatly were featured in this. One obviously Lars, his his counterpart, and then also um his queen. Uh and his queen's fetch. And 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 he is very close to uh Canuck. I think Canuck has sort of taken him a bit under her wing since he's arrived and has sort of shielded him away from his own ignorance in a lot of places. Rudyard has a feeling of doing uh, whatever means necessary to make sure that this stops because this interferes with his ability to just spend time to himself and not be bothered by anybody. And all of this mess is just causing more messes. So he's willing to, to take care of it. Yeah, I think Zilka is probably just still in like investigation, figure this out mode, because we, we need to figure this out. Um, and she's incredibly nosy. Uh, I wonder if I should start looking through mirrors, see if I can see what's going on here. That's a good idea. That's a good idea right there. <laughs> can I do my my Spiegel build thing, Tom? Try to look through some. Uh, Look through some mirrors, see if I can see someone doing something sketchy in the area. 
Mm. <laughs> Maybe after you change location a little bit. Okay. Okay. So let's go, uh, like, just get as close to where the epicenter seems like it was mm -hmm. as we can. Yeah, Try to triangulate right. at least like which building it might have come from, that kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Radio do does have very acute senses, so he is probably able to to identify a good way into the maze of uh, apartments around you, and so you enter some of the backyards. Um, the uh, atmosphere does shift. Um, the buildings are run down from this side. You can see cracks on the paint. You can, you can see that um, water that wasn't uh, directed in a good way from the roof tainted the color of the wall and did some damage to the stoneworks. And um, there their windows, most of them, are closed uh, with curtains or stuff like this, but you can see the small shimmers of light from there. And then there's some... It's it's almost almost hurting you to see how, how open these spaces are. One can easily see into the flats and you can you can see the people arguing inside and having their fights and hitting the bottles and and it's so unveiled so raw so many places and still there's this pane of glass between you and these people you can't hear the voices but it's a strange situation to be in because what was the last time somebody shouted at you in an argument like a normal person does? It's been a while. Do we yeah, miss? Think... Sorry. I was going to say, I think, I think Zilka gets shouted at occasionally, but it's mostly just when she pops up where she doesn't need to be. <laughs> it's like, like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's not about you left the toilet lid open or you didn't wash the pan or stuff like this. Do you miss this? I don't think I miss being yelled at now. <laughs> I think I think Zilka prefers it this way. In the back of his mind. Rudy does because it kind of reminds him of the times that he's spent in his previous life being in underground dive bars and warehouse shows things of that nature and everything being loud and being able to get lost in the loudness and now things are not loud they're very quiet and so he's had to adjust so it's almost comforting in a way to him yeah it's strange it's pretty strange mm -hmm. some dogs bark to you and then you see the telltale signs of the words of the bubble there, you located a place. It is a s probably small, small place in a fifth story, right beneath the roofs. You see some light. Somebody is sitting there, probably at the kitchen table, but the lamp illuminating the place is, is not in the same room. The kitchen lights are turned off. You... You 
feel. Feel that there's some resistance. Can't put your finger on it, but there's something, something pushing you away from this place. Um, Rudyard is going to look at the other two and go, just to cut down on spooking anyone, I'm going to, uh, I'll be here, but I won't be here. And, um, he's going to step back in, like, a shadowed corner in the hallway that they're in, uh, and I would like to roll dexterity in a cult to utilize my, uh, blessing, my, um, my kith blessing, spending a, uh, a, um, Pardon me. Point of a, a point of glamour to make myself incorporeal, incorporeal and uh, invisible. You need to to touch something insubstantial for this. Is it a cloud of steam? Is it fog? What do you touch? There is a vent, an air vent nearby in the corner of this hallway that is blowing air out and there's particles of dust that have accumulated on the air vent when it's not being used that are you can see kind of flitting in the light rays from one of the overhead bulbs, the fluorescent bulbs. And Rudyard just grabs a hold of some of those dust particles and we'll see if this works if I make the roll. That is one success. That's totally enough. And you see Rudy's hand kind of fade into little more dust particles and it moves down his arm until the whole of him just kind of settles. And occasionally the other two can see like a movement. It seems like there are dust particles that are moving through the air but they kind of have a rooty shape to them. I, I think you see Princeton just sort of takes, like rolls back their shoulders and takes a deep breath and their whole demeanor kind of changes and shifts. Like it's relaxed and it's, it's princely. Again, all that anger, all that frustration as they hide their emotions and are ready to be ever so charming for whoever is going to be beyond this door and not simply just cleave them in twain. All right, we're, we're going to meet a wonderful new friend. Shall we? And he reaches a hand out ready to knock. Should I? Door. Do you not want me to look first? Or do you want to look first? I think we should, out of caution. All right, look first. That would be delightful. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use Mirror Mirror, uh, which is the Spiegel build power, and look through this mirror space. Wits plus composure. Just to point one thing out, you're right now on ground level. Mm -hmm. The apartment that uh, Rudyard is going towards is up on the fifth floor. Okay. I think that's worth So just uh, knocking on that door would be difficult from the point at which you are right now. Just <laughs> Okay, gotcha. Uh, I clicked um, roll, it didn't roll. Hang on one second. Sorry. It's all right. I just start with Rudyard and then you can tell me what their dice decided to give you. So you're closing in on this window. Rudy, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. You are like only if oh, you only drew like 
10, 20 yards closer to the window, mm -hmm. as you notice some motion inside. The person sitting at the kitchen table um, turns his head up and, and looks around as if something startled them. And then you feel that your eyes lock with theirs over the whole distance of like four stories. And they seem to see you. Rudy is going to, when my eyes lock, is going to stop turn with his back to the building and lean against it and like put his hands in his pocket like he's waiting for something and is going to look over at the other two and just whisper with like his mouth away from the window and like it can kind of carry on the wind they can see me That's not good. Certainly not. But but we have other methods and means that we can perhaps inspire. Do you wish to still try to go through mirrors or do you want something else? I am trying to go through mirrors just to see what's going on in there. Mm -hmm. um, and for some reason, Foundry doesn't want to work for me, so I have used my Onyx Dice app and have gotten two successes. <laughs> Onyx Dice app available on all smartphone uh, places where you, you can just get shake apps. it and it rolls. It's pretty great. Oh, that's cute. And it also has changing dice. Um, <clears throat> so, I, what does it look like to Princeton as you use your kiss blessing? Um. To Princeton, it looks like I'm just looking at my mirror, but I'm, I've gone completely still and I don't, I'm, I'm kind of not there. And I'm, 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 I'm like flickering a little bit in and out because I'm in mirror space right now, but I'm still like part way in the real world. This mirror space is a very, very interesting place. It is rumored to be somewhere in the deepest heartlands of the hedge. And the kind of you just take a yonder through it and then you feel the connection to this one mirror and you um, and you look through it it has an ornate frame in some old golden tone you would guess it's even wood painted years ago for somebody who knew their craft and the surface is tarnished so it's not the easiest thing to have a good look through it but still you you can make out stuff the light bulb in the corridor you're in is lit. That's the light you saw from outside. And you have a peek at the kitchen, the half shadows that are residing there and just dipping everything in a coat of ink. You look around, there's an old rug and you can see the place where the uh, shoes are stored. They are old, outworn shoes, beige jackets, a umbrella used for decades in a door with several locks and keychains. And then there's this person. Now even more startled. C 
confused. You, you can see they, they had a plate, a knife, some bread and butter on the table. A hand you can't describe as young anymore. Shivers and touches the, the knife. It falls from the plate. You can hear the clinking sound. They stand up. They, um... They pull a blanket around their shoulders as if to bar out some cold. But you know, you know that you are the cold. And I need you to roll some dice for me. Please roll. I roll. Resolve plus composure. Do your thing. One success. Sorry, it was ten again, so it was doing its thing. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. You feel vertigo for a second, and it is as if you want to repel yourself from this from the mirror. There's something screaming inside of you. Just get out of here. Turn your gaze away before you can really see what this is. But if you want to, you can resist. That was the dice roll. No, I want to keep looking. It's 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 Ilka. She has to know everything. <laughs> well, I don't know if you have seen this person for some time. You probably keep tabs on them, but how much do you really know? This elderly lady living her life in this place, one in a billion, easily forgotten. You look at this woman's face as she, her gaze turns around to the mirror. She has more wrinkles. You know that nose and ears are growing with age. Everything else does not but these do. So the ears and the nose are bigger. The skin is paper thin. Just like the hair. Grayish white. But the eyes are still the same. They are not filled with the desire to know everything. They are filled with the knowledge they saw a lot. And you see yourself at the age of 65. And you recognize yourself, both of you do. And then there's a push, like a hammer hitting your forehead, throwing you backwards, out of the mirror, back into your body. Well, that's a whole new wrinkle. If you're talking, we cannot hear you. Okay. No, no, no. What kind of wrinkle? Is is something amiss? What did you What did you see? It's okay. It, it's, it's, it's just my fetch. You know. It's your fetch. Yeah. Yep. Uh huh. They're, I, I, they're doing some weird stuff. Hmm. All right, then. Yeah, I guess we go talk to her. She knows I exist, so. She knows you exist. All right. I, we can, we can handle that. Do we want to just, do you want to just amble on in or should we try something a little more covert. Ah, oh, we can all go. Like I said, she, she knows I exist. I just kind of let her live her life, but now she's messing with us, and I don't like that. 
Yeah, no, that's un unacceptable. All right, let's go up. Rudy, are you coming? Um, storyteller, are there balconies that Rudy can shamble up? Sure. Uh, Rudy's going to look at you two and go, you two take the front door. I'm going to make sure if there's anything else going on that uh, no one tries to slip out. Brilliant. Perfect. Uh, and uh, he is going to attempt to do one of those things that, you know, people that do parkour do, which is attempt to do a wall run where you hop off something, like a, a wall hop where you hop up on something and then grab onto a balcony and start shimmying up the, like, these different balconies. There's probably a fire escape, too. That's too easy, though. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this isn't a thing over here. Really? Oh, oh, fire wow. safety. Who cares? You just about let that? people die in fires. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got very good response times with the fire brigades. Oh, of course, oh okay. of course, that makes sense. Yeah, there's, there's that compensation there. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I can see how an ephemeral Rudyard could easily do the parkour thing. Mm -hmm. Parkour, parkour. Get up there. He's probably faster than you are. Yeah, I think uh, Princeton just offers his arm to Silke to take. No? Silke does not take it. <laughs> Silke Princeton, just starts up the stairs. Princeton sighs, and he's like, Maximus, keep keep an eye over here. Just watch the watch the streets, make sure nothing weird happens. Brought your horse inside? Of course. <sighs> of course. <laughs> He's just monitoring the first. With the horse, my best friend. I thought I was your best friend. You are my other best friend. I thought Rudy was your best friend. He is my other other best friend. I thought Dita was your best friend. They are my other 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 best. Friend. <laughs> what about Lars? Is he your best friend? Uh, no, he's my love. <laughs> he like pauses halfway through as he realizes so good just got him to say it. Like... <laughs> Turns a, a little Confirmed. red. Confirmed. Anyway, going up. Yeah, it goes up. So, Rudyard, mm -hmm. you reached the balcony with this story. It would be a very good side if there were nice places to look at. You only see more windows, more people living their mundane lives something that's barred away from you why don't you roll me some wits plus composure then you've got acute senses so please roll another some more dice for that one as well I all right I suppose to do wits plus composure and then okay and then extra dice so booyah hope oh, did not do it come on now okay I'll just pick something that goes along with it then it's gonna be composure plus a cult but that's how that's how it works that's, that's the amount of dice I need. Which is two successes. Right. You can't pinpoint them. But you have a feeling there's another party having an interest in the situation. Maybe it's behind one of these curtained windows. Maybe it's somebody in the doorway. Maybe they use other devices, but you feel being watched. Not you personally, but you get this overall sense. You were a watchdog. Mm -hmm. You know how this feels. Um... Rudy's going to, from the balcony, is going to start trying to pay attention 
he's fully confident in Princeton and Silky's abilities to uh, Silka's abilities to um, handle this situation. So he's going to be keeping an eye out for anything, a brush of a curtain with a hand that's not quite human, or an eye peering through a wall or something of that nature, any kind of glimmer, uh, or any kind of thing that, see, that might be the hedge bleeding through, any of that nature. Just, just perched like he used to be, a, a, a good, loyal gargoyle. Just, just perched and ready, just in case. I wish I could remember we already established this. I would think this would be a good op opportunity to do some canning. You would invest one point of willpower mm -hmm. and be able to see something supernatural happening around you. Okay, dokie. Yeah, that is perfectly sufficient. I'll go ahead and do that. Spin that. So. And then just go for another five dice roll because Excellent. it would be Wits plus Composure again. Excellent. 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 All right. Two successes. Somebody is watching you. You know it. You still need to find the the spot from which they are looking mm -hmm. at you but it is no no now you can see you see it they are in the dogs the barking dogs they use the eyes of the hounds down there Rudy is going to do what Rudy does best and is going to hell dive like the good hell diver he is towards those dogs. So he's just going to completely reliant, trusting in the other two to be able to manage what is going on in there and is going to just hop on down towards those dogs. I think at this point you reach a door. Maximus is probably still waiting outside because he's a giant horse. He doesn't fit into this building. And you went up into the fourth, uh, fifth floor. Mm. Ring, knock, just open the door. What do you do? Um, I imagine that Princeton will knock and it's 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 strange because he he doesn't just do one knock but it's like several in like this small patterned almost whimsical song of itself of greeting no response Zilka opens the door it does open but just for a bit they're chains in place now and you can clearly hear somebody stumbling backwards away from the door. Um, I would like to... Sp hmm. Yeah, I'll spend a point of uh, glamour to invoke one of my contracts. Uh, Cupid's Arrow. I want to learn uh, this subject's most ardent desire and any associated condition or tilts. And then I'm going to refocus them around a new desire. So uh, it's gonna be my wits and empathy and mantle versus composure and tolerance. Oof, one success. Can I? You could 
use some willpower. Yeah, I think I'm three additional dice. You usually you would have uh, announced it before the roll, but we aren't RPG police, so <laughs> if you want to spend one willpower, do yeah, it. I'm gonna spend a willpower. And roll uh, three more dice. I mean, I'm I'm the RPG police. I don't know about you. <laughs> Wee woo, wee woo. <laughs> Whenever you put out a new edition, we come to your house and take all your old editions and burn them. Okay, so that's uh, two successes. Whew, so many dice, a little success. This is the, the story teller sighing. <laughs> oh. So. I think it would be a very Princeton thing as soon as the door opens, just the slightest bit, that he would try to poke inside the room and have a good look at what whoever is in there. Mm -hmm. And you, you realize the door doesn't open any further and the person behind is backing away from you. But you can still see them. Mm -hmm. What does it look like to Silke as you invoke your contract? Cupid's arrow. So again, I think there's sort of this almost, the lights flicker and flits with a bit of color and there's this popping sound as it's almost like uh, the fireworks on a spr or a summer's typically, a summer's night as you're enjoying all of that. It's, it's just this dazzling glimmer. And without the lips actually moving, they start to give away a well-kept secret, a desire, something so important to this person. I want I want to live. I want to know that I'm alive. I want to know that I mean something. And I think that that, that strikes Princeton very hard. Um, it's an emotion they themselves desire that they've had often. But knowing their situation and the harm that this fetch has caused, uh, they preserve on and smile and whisper in the zone as they press a new desire into this fetch's mind uh, that they must entertain their new guests. They very much want to talk to us and be forthright and willing and a perfect host. starts to hum be our guest under his voice <laughs> <laughs> to the fetch perfect segue uh. to what's happening next um <laughs> yeah actually you know yes you can see elderly imposter zilka finding back her composure and with a little swing in her elderly bones she dances towards the door she smiles at you for a second to notify that you have to get away so she can just yeah. get rid of the chains and, and all the stuff still humming he backs away and you can you, you don't have to wait long. It's just it's so easy. It's so easy. She invites you in. She opens the door widely. It's just, she makes all the space for you you could ever need. Thank you. I have to say you look quite fetching, dear. As he smiles at her and strides in. I hope I please you. She says, Ooh. and you realize what you just did. Are you any better than a fae? 
to go into a person's mind and change their desires in such a way they try to protect themselves and you made them open the door. Please roll four dice. <laughs> oh boy. Princeton, you made it creepy. <laughs> Princeton, you made it creepy. Usually, usually I'm the one that makes it creepy. <laughs> hey, listen, you have to share. Sharing is caring. These are the fairest for you. Yeah. <laughs> Good old fuck around and find out, gang. Oh, one success. <laughs> Wonderful. Please roll three dice to see how many clarity damage you will receive for tampering with somebody's core. Hey, no successes. And why the f <laughs> hatch do you get away with this? Because <laughs> Prince, is, he's doing the right thing. He's a Prince Charming. He's right in this story. He's making it okay. And he's, he's only doing this for the betterment and safety of others. It's not like he's a fae who's selfishly doing this. He's saving his love who's in need and anyone else at this this vile fetch could possibly be tampering. Hey, that's me. <laughs> it's not you. It's your fetch. Yeah, but I'd let her beat me. Well, maybe we need to talk about that later. <laughs> I can only air quote so many times. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about your fetch later. later. <laughs> but yeah, Prince just I need smiles. to implement a house rule that I just can give clarity damage to you. It, it, it not needs to be happening. No, Prince is, Prince is great. He's walking on sunshine. He's like... He's just because he's, he's such a himbo. He's just he's too dumb to get it. <laughs> he like he like can't get to why this is wrong because he is so convinced of his own like his correctness. own rightness and like that he is the hero in this story. Yeah, you know what this resembles? A fairy. No, <laughs> no. I'm helping people. Sure, sure. I reward you with a point of virtue for this. Congrats. Thank you. Be happy, get to 10. Um, <laughs> so, with this probably most passive aggressive ep uh, episode of me storytelling, um, <laughs> let's return to the story. So, yeah, she opens the door for you and welcomes you in. Um,. I think she she just will leave it open. Probably more will join you. Prince just closes the door. <laughs> it um is a well oiled door. There's is it satisfying? I don't know if it's satisfying. The noise it makes as the bolt snaps into its place. Somebody's entrapped. But who? She leads you into the living room. It is a well-kept place. And... What would elderly Zilka would uh, have in her living room, Dixie? I think that elderly Zilka, as she used to be, uh, probably has some memorabilia from uh, her, her her days doing journalism and stuff like that. But mostly, I think that she settled down. Like, I think that she decided to go back to being more of a, a normal person um, as, as the fetch. Like, she just wanted to live a quiet life and be here and be alive. And so... It, it, it looks like a typical elderly woman's house. There's like, you know, lace doilies on end tables and little knickknacks of like, you know, cherubs and things, maybe a cross on the wall. Just kind of your your very basic like older woman's house. Like she's got some of her old stuff that's, that's kind of like in a little case somewhere, but most of it is, is packed away. Shortbread cookie tins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, a, there, there's a cookie tin that's full of needles and threads and, uh, yeah, there's there's family photos. Maybe yeah. maybe she got married. Maybe she has kids and grandkids and stuff. I don't know. I think you're going to learn this right now. Mm-hmm. So 
their pictures on the wall. They're of a sepia brown quality by this point. You see yourself, well, not as, as goth punk you are right now, but um, a, mil a little bit more attuned to society. You're holding hands with a young man. It is a, the posture of you both, it's, it's, it's very um, rigid, but the dress you wear it's wide, it's long, it has style. And the way you're holding hands, showing off the rings, it's, um, that's telling more than the faces who are looking quite sternly into the camera. These hands are holding onto each other. Not in the same way as Princeton touched Lars' hand, but in a reassuring, steady way. Mm -hmm. Princeton, look, I got married. Oh, delightful. Weird, right? Yeah, it's a little strange. I, I honestly. I adore you, Suki. You're one of my other best friends, but it's hard for me to imagine you coupling. Yeah, that's not really something I'm interested in. Yeah. But hey, that's why I'm totally happy to let this one have their life. Yeah, no, and it's... He smiles a little. It's what they, they want. They just want to live. So, Zilka, other Zilka, hello. Hi. Hi. So, what have you been doing? There's, there's been some things happening. You, you can have this life. You can have this apartment. I don't need it. I don't want it. Honestly, it seems kind of boring. But I want you to stop doing this thing. This thing with the waves, with the masks, and the dreams. There's a, there's a thing happening that we need to stop. She nods. She just nods. Can you tell us what you were doing exactly and why, darling? Darling fetching other Zelka. It just feels so... so strange to me in itself. It's just... I... It was probably very foolish. why I did this I you're here you're my guests I I oh, I'm so sorry I'm I'm such a terrible person please take your seats take your seats no, you're, not, you're, you're not, not terrible you're, you're fine I, you're perfectly I'm, fine I'm insisting please sit down of, of course we'll take seats I will I will make some coffee just take a second and she leaves the room she following doesn't... your orders <laughs> She doesn't seem to remember. I, I, I wonder is perhaps you, you thought your fet this individual could be a victim, someone acting against their own will. Could Maybe, but while while she's in the kitchen, um, I will start looking around the room, seeing if I see anything out of place using my my kenning, as it were. Sure, go for it. What's the roll for that again? Wits plus composure, I think. I do a lot of those. Or it might be just your max, uh, your current number of clarity hitboxes. In first edition, Christ. 
in first edition it was Wits plus Composure. So where we go with this? I got six successes. Oh, oh. get it. Hard to show, but I got six successes. Good. Very well. Six successes. Six successes. He is an investigative journalist. I am. I am. This is kind of my, my thing is ferreting out truth. How does it look like as you try to get a glimpse of the supernatural? I think we haven't established this so far. What is your method? Hmm. I think that if you look at her really, really closely, like, like Prince would probably notice this, but other people wouldn't. Um, Cause she's got very dark eyes usually, but her eyes switch over and look more like her changeling eyes. They turn into like almost like camera lenses. You can almost like see into them. Um, and for, so it, it's not super obvious to outsiders, but for Zilka, um, everything changes. It's like, it's like using like, you know, heat signature type goggles. Um, but it, it puts like an overlay over everything where she can see supernatural hotspots and everything else is kind of dark, black and white. <clears throat> um, you don't get blinded. Well, good. But there's something immensely powerful resting in the kitchen right now. So I will follow our host to the kitchen and just your purpose and to come with me. Princeton will stand up and stride forward. Uh, he's got a hand on his blade, just in case. There's something in there. Yes, coffee, hopefully. No, there's something else in there. Oh, that's... <sighs> well, we'll handle it. It is placed on the other side of the plate. It is a key, a rusted old key. And as you look at it with your unhindered side, it is as if the whole apartment, the kitchen just shudders and then starts falling. And we return to our friend Rudyard on the outside. <laughs> there are dogs and there's a darkling. What happens as you glide down from the heavens and the roofs in the middle of the night? Mm. How are the dogs contained, like kept? Are they like, are they locked in an apartment and they're barking or are they like chained up to a, a, a post? Two of them are in a kennel and I hope that that's the right word mm -hmm. for kennel. it. Yes. Um, and there's, uh, one of them is pacing at the uh, bars of it and the other one is just sitting on the ground and both of them are, are watching you intensely. And then there's another one, a wild dog, outside of the kennel, close to a um, pathway uh, with, would, which would lead outside to the streets of Berlin. And this wild dog starts growling at you. Well, no, uh, sorry, I, I said they can't see you. They just so it yeah. is growling in your general direction, not having pointed you. I'm going to run a mess of somewhere because I don't know which of these dogs or if all of them are a conduit. So we're gonna get a little bit wild with this. I'm going to unlatch the kennel so that the dogs could push the door open themselves but not completely open it. Then I'm going to walk over to the, the pathway that leads out into the streets of Berlin. And if there's a door that's keeping the dogs from 
leaving, mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. And then you see Rudyard bring out a Slim Jim from his pocket. It's probably been there for a couple weeks. Been saving it, just in case. <laughs> Pocket meat. Pocket meat, exactly. I see. So you entrap the dogs that are catch this ride? Uh, I'm unlatching the kennel door so that they can oh, okay. they, so they that, so they can leave because he's going to oh. try to see he, he he's trying to see if potentially he can get them to leave the premises. Or mm -hmm. if like and try and trying to see if any of them leave the premises and if one stays behind, even though there's the temptation of uh, prepackaged processed meat, uh, then <laughs> that might be the one that uh, he needs to have a chat with. Wonderful. I think the kennel dogs they just latch onto the opportunity. Mm -hmm. They, um, um, they aren't breeded dogs. They aren't German Shepherds or, or Bulldogs or any, anything like this. They're wild mix and um, uh, they, they have this desire to leave the place. They do. The uh, one wild dog is intrigued by the meat. Rudyard's going to crisscross applesauce on the ground and hold the Slim Jim out. You... Let's see what's happening. It's a hell of a way to say sit across like it. <laughs> I always feel it's like a regional thing some people say. Oh, Christmas yeah, no. applesauce, yeah. yeah. We, yeah, say yeah. That, we say that here too. Yeah. I had yeah. never heard that until I was fully an adult. <laughs> I never heard it. <laughs> it's, it's just it's just to sit cross like it. I just realized that it's like crisscross applesauce, but yeah, it just sits on the ground and then crosses his legs in like a waiting <laughs> position. I, I like crisscross applesauce. It feels very Rudyard. Do you? <laughs> Do you take corporal form? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and spend another glamour to take corporal form. Corporal you return form. to your body and manifest in front of the dog and suddenly the watching presence leaves in a way. Not totally, but you can you can feel that the dog is taking over. There was there was definitely some sort of foreign influence on this animal, and now the dog uh, dog comes closer to you, sniffing at the meat, looking at you suspiciously. I'm just gonna hold the meat out, and I'm gonna hold a hand up. Just like a, you can sniff me if you want to. You can come here, buddy. It's fine. The duck, uh, the dog draws closer, sniffing me, sniffing at you. You can feel its breath on your skin. You can, can feel the wet air. And Roger's like, come on, lad, come on. I'm just like you. You and I are the same. Just a couple of old dogs been abandoned by their master. This is right. The dog lays down, puts his head on your knee. And I need you to tell me, do you have anything that resembles some sort of danger sense? 
Uh, yeah, I would say, um, he's got some streetwise to them, to him. He's able to read a situation to, like, kind of realize if something is, like, amiss. He's also got survival as well. Right. Choose one of these skills. Okay. Throw them with wits. Wits. We'll go, we'll go wits and well, they're the same. So wits and streetwise. And I can I can roll I, I can spend a willpower correct to uh, add a yeah, success you can. just in case. Add yeah, three dice. Got it. Three dice. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and try this. Oh, okay. Boop, boop. That is one success. When he dies, the dog. Picks up eye contact with you. And for a short moment, the foreign intelligence is back. And you have the feeling that's, that it's communicating with you, talking to you. Mm -hmm. You're right. We are old dogs indeed. But there's a difference between you and I. I am not abandoned. And somebody jumps out of the shadows and tries to hit you over the head. But you notice it a split second before. Declare the last action of tonight. Uh, Rudyard noticing that somebody is going to try to hit me is going to, while like in like that cross legged position, is going to do like a rolling motion. Um, and is going to try to use one of his legs to knock the feet out from under this person and then draw the knife that he has in the sheath that's on his belt and hold it right up to their knife or to their neck. And you feel some cold metal on your skin as well. And we just have a brief look at what's happening up in the apartment. Um, we can see elderly Fetch Silke grabbing the key turning around and as she sees your face as she's realizing what you're here for and she says you want you want this be my guest you may have it and then a feeling of numbness takes over your bodies and you enter a dream. And that's the point at which we're going to end the tonight's session of Changing the Lost. Oh, oh my god, Tom! <laughs> you need, what I love about Tom, like what I always love about Tom, is that it is broad daylight right now. It is 4 yeah. p.m. on a Friday. It's like, and mm -hmm. I'm still creeped out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I got the heebie-jeebies, like, ugh. Like, like usually, I, I only get a little creeped out if it's, like, it's nighttime and it's dark outside, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's, like, like getting there. But, like, no, if it's broad daylight, I'm drinking coffee, hanging out, and, it's, yeah. it, and I'm creeped out. I am surrounded by beautiful windows with sunlight, and I yeah. feel like I'm in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> Darkness is seeping in. I love it. That's a whiz. Wes's face. <laughs> Wes's <laughs> face near the end of that was amazing. It was great. Oh, it was. We so were just much. like, yeah, everything, 
everything. Well, it's everything that I've heard Tom do or games that we've been a part of with Tom running it. I'm just like, oh no. Like, oh no. <laughs> I get, I get like goose flesh or like goosebumps. Yeah. Like constantly, consistently. It's phenomenal. I also like that it's really great because uh, with, with your green screening that you're doing, Wes, there's like a green shadow that's like the shape of your body oh, at different yeah. intervals. And it's delightful. Oh, yeah, oh. It, 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 it looks like you're going incorporeal. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. It was so great. With your, just, Which is oh. kind of what I think whenever I like move too fast. Yeah. My like hands disappear and stuff. I'm like, well, might as well be incorporeal. Just for a little bit, you know. Delightful. Well. Well. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. Also, you go ahead I... and plug our stuff. Maybe. Yeah, we should. And I would like to start actually plugging something I didn't do until right now, Ooh. because uh, our beautiful listeners can listen to some music as well as you. And I probably should credit the person who did this. So I already told you that we are using Foundry Virtual Tabletop right now as mm -hmm. a virtual tabletop surface. And there is a beautiful module called um, yeah, it's called a name. Uh, sorry. Uh, tabletop RPG music. Mm -hmm. It is for free. Foundry isn't. You have to pay for this. But this module is for free and will supply you with the beautiful tracks we got. And I think some of them I play today are actually new. We have hadn't have them at our first game. So it's an act, uh, active development. There's more stuff coming. I ask for more um music for tense or combat situations and i looked into the module today and there was more of it so that's a great Ooh. thing Ooh. if you consider getting foundry virtual tabletop check in for this specific module it is just the best for this Excellent. yeah it, so, it, it, it does really help set the mood for the players i think 100 mm -hmm. it's very helpful also so so big thank you to Rachel, who uh, mm -hmm. sh made the shout out on Twitter. I could answer to and and get this giveaway going. I'm honestly jealous <laughs> that I can't <laughs> have this stuff for free, and I uh, will probably need to to pay this beautiful artist for the wonderful work they do. And it's just it's just the best, it's just <laughs> the best. So please, my wonderful players, tell us all the important stuff about yourself. Okay. Uh, okay. Find you, you follow you. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so I'm Kay. Uh, you can find me hanging out on either the Gehenna Gaming or the Carrion Comfort Discord. Uh, you can obviously you found me here. So next week you will also find me here playing the wonderful Princeton Channing for our sequel to this lovely adventure. But you can also find me tomorrow on Carrion Comfort Studios for the second part of Brass Wine Glass, a hey. Delta Green adventure. You can also find uh, the wonderful Dixie Cochran there, uh, who I have a lovely adversarial rookie cop captain relationship <laughs> with. In a, yeah, you can find that at Carrion Comfort Studios. Uh, the video to view last week's session is there, so you can catch up on that real quick. Tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. Uh, you will not find me on Monday this week on Gehenna Gaming. We're taking a little break, but if you've seen uh, any of our Gehenna Valley Monster Hearts, we're having the Q&A for our second season next week, Monday at 7.30 as well. Wes? Hi, my name's Wes. Like I said at the top, my name's Wes Franks, or Brother Wes with Carrying Cover Studios. A another Twitch stream here around. Uh, also, uh, we've got a YouTube. We've got a Patreon. Um, all the links that you can find for me on Twitter. I have a link tree that links to everything that I'm involved in. Uh, there, it's at Brother X Wes on Twitter, uh, and you can see me. Uh, talking about various things, promoting various stuff. Uh, just like like Kay said, tomorrow night is Operation Brass Wine Glass. Um, and tonight we have the next episode of Kingdom Hearts, The Interstitial War. It's episode nine, The Lost Princess. Um, so if you're Ooh. a fan of Kingdom Hearts uh, and you want to see uh, using a Powered by the Apocalypse system, Interstitial, uh, our hearts intertwined. Um, it is, uh, it's very cool. Uh, it has featured our very own right above me here. 
uh, Dixie Cochran as Maleficent in one of the previous episodes, and t soon to be more episodes to be. So definitely check that out. It's available on YouTube and on our Twitch. Uh, we also are doing a two-part Solemn Veil vale series to promote the game uh, Solemn Veil, vale, uh, developed by Dirty Vortex Games. Uh, Mark Kelly, uh, the very own Matthew Dawkins, and <laughs> Stephanie Devon. A lot um, of Onyx Pathers are on it. A lot of Onyx Pathers are on it. So uh, definitely go check out their Kickstarter, and you can check out the series if you want to see it uh, played. It's on our uh, Twitch, and it's going to be on our YouTube next week. Um, and uh, then Sunday we have more Crack the Sky, which is a Lancer game. Uh, so if you like big mechs uh, and uh, 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 a very anime energy, then check that out. Uh, we also have Cypress and Steel, a Victorian mage uh four-part series coming up soon, so stick to look at Twitter for Karen, Karen Cover Studios or my Twitter, and you will see more announcements about that. Plus, you have too many games. I have too many things. Well, a lot of, <laughs> luckily, luckily I'm, I'm, a, I'm producing most of it, so I'm just in the shadows for the most of it, but <laughs> but yeah, some of it I'm, I'm, I'm involved, but yeah. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> so, much, then, so much, so much stuff. So much, so much stuff. Yeah, okay. wonderful entertainment at Karen Comfort Studios all the time. For free. For free. <laughs> I'm Dixie Cochran. Most of you know me from the Onyx Pathcast and the Onyx Path crew. Obviously, we have lots of games going on here. Uh, we do still have our Indiegogo going on for Victorian Mage, which Wes just mentioned. Uh, so if you're interested in that, go check it out. Give it a, give it a, I don't know what you call it. It's usually a Kickstart. Give it a go-go. Go -go. Give it a go-go. Give it a go-go. Um, <laughs> and like, like everybody said, uh, I will be on Carrying Comfort tomorrow in Operation Brass Wineglass. Um, for some reason, I seem to always play characters that uh, tell Kay what to do. Um, I don't know why that's our dynamic, but it is. <laughs> it just seems to be a dynamic that we have ended Settled up into. with. We'll have to, <sighs> new one shot. I get to tell Dixie what I get to do. We'll put that in the works. <laughs> All right. And uh, yeah, you can find me pretty much anywhere at Dixie Cyanide. I am in the Onyx Path Discord, obviously. I'm also in the other Discords that got mentioned here. I'm around. I'm just around. It's, a, it's where I am. Uh, and Tom. Our wonderful host, thank you so much. Our fantastic host. Yeah, I'm Where can folks a, find you? What are you up to, Tom? I, I'm just a bodiless voice represented by stained glass and thorns. Um, <laughs> I'm also lurking some online conventions. Um, I fell in love with many awesome people at Ghana Gaming, Caring Comfort Studios, and Onyx Path, and there's a tiny, tiny pond in between us, so you will probably catch me only in their discords and on twitter at tom mer too and i'm still blaming somebody else with this name that they took <laughs> away the twitter handle and i have to be just the second one but it is a stolen name i can't be angry and um are you a fetch tom <laughs> maybe i am Oh, Hopefully so I is am. That, is that why you won't let us see you? Are you made of like sticks and cobwebs and <laughs> discarded buttons? Yeah, maybe I incite a clarity check if you see me. I don't oh, know. No. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Tom's actually a fae. <sighs> Probably. I, uh, I can't neither say yes or no to this, so... Um, <laughs> Cannot confirm or deny. I'm, yeah, I'm bound by contracts. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, I am on online conventions and I just wanted to point something out. Um, this adventure will be continued next week at the same time. And it was heavily influenced by me reading Oak, Ash and Thorn, the Changing the Lost Companion. And I'm so, so, so hedgish <laughs> uh, excited to finally have the next book in my hands i i need it and thank you thank you so much for joining us and listen to our story tell our story and with this i say to our few european listeners watchers good night dear listeners and a wonderful day to everybody else Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good day. Good evening. Boop. <laughs> <laughs>